Hello everyone, welcome to the next Chebcast. Today we're discussing the necromancy layer. And we're here with It's Ghost UK and So Hi for Hentai. Ignore the name. <laughs> Maybe not. Your choice. I got your name th right this time, It's Ghost. Yeah. Yay! <laughs> down. Down. I don't know what was wrong with me, but I just kept imagining there was an A in there for some reason. No, it's fine. Techn technically, technically, you're not wrong. It is a ghost in the UK, so... Yeah. <laughs> Alright, so to kick this thing off, I've pretty much separated my ideas into two pools. I've got the living necromancer's lair, then I've got the undead necromancer's lair, because both are very different. They've got very different needs, and they've got very different limitations. For example, in the living necromancer's lair, you need good ventilation, good hygiene. You probably don't want any zombies inside the lair. You probably just want clean kinds of undead, like skeletons, mummies, ghosts, and spirits. Whereas in the undead necromancer's lair, you can go really crazy with it. You can have like really poor hygiene. You can even have no air at all. You could have like completely putrid air. And these are like great defenses and stuff against living intruders. And it won't have any effect on you because you're already undead. You're describing my bedroom. <laughs> yeah. Uh, which one are we focusing on first? Um, let's focus on the living first. Uh, so, a living, have any ideas for that? As in what you can constitute as a living one? Because there are going to be limitations for it because it's the living thing, so. Yeah. What I mean by living is like the necromancer is alive and not dead. I don't mean that the the lair is like alive or something. So I guess like we could talk about um, what kind of minions you'd want in there. I'm thinking you'd want purely skeletons or maybe mummies because mm -hmm. it's just going to stink to high hell in there if you have zombies and you know. Um. I'd say skeletons, mummies, uh, spiritual, spectral, undead, and you're probably gonna want, I'd say, insects as well, because because if you're gonna be inside this big fleshy pulsating um, love child of Geiger and John Carpenter, then it's you know you're, you're gonna want you're gonna want it's it's gonna reek to high heaven and back. You're gonna want something to clean up the mess so to speak so if you're going to have like these great big quivering piles of rot or these great big fleshy lumps or you know like these very big horrible bits and pieces here and there you're going to want something to clean it up so why why not just throw some insects on there and job done yeah i don't mean living in that sense i mean like the necromancer is alive versus the necromancer is dead oh right I want to say, yeah, yeah, usually skeletons and some spirits, but like, uh, the spirits will probably be made invisible if they can, and probably placed in strategic places. So, the moment, like, somebody tries to enter the lair, they, like, first fight off the skeletons, maybe do that. But then they get backstabbed by something. They don't know what. That's just kind of my goal, right, that first. But for the living necromancer, I'd also say that they probably want to conceal their identity for the time being. Considering that, you know, they're still living, they need to be able to get uh, supplies and maybe even going to, like, their local market if they can, or if that's, like, just nearby them in general. So, you mm. know, just kind of have their living expenses. If they can't do that, then it's going to be pretty hard to sustain themselves since just kind of living off the land can be a bit of an issue at times. It's possible, but uh, that much seclusion and requiring that much wildlife would require to be pretty damn far away from normal cities and that would just require it would not require but give very few bodies to even necromance with yeah another thing you could do is set up below us a, a city in in like the sewer system or something i was thinking that that would like that'd be for more of the lich or the, although i was just thinking of that for just well actually no i had a different idea for that in general yeah that'd be a good would... that's for any the necromance would be good would that be advisable though like, let's say, for example, you, you go through all this all this way to become a lich, and you're like, aha, I'm now immortal. Now for the next part of my plan. Oh, goody, says Igor. What is the next part of your plan, my lord? Well, we're going to go underneath the, into the filthy sewers, and we're going to... Have you, have you ever heard of this guy called Guy Fawkes? We're going to do that. 
it's very unhygienic down there and there's also the potential for visitors because you're so close to the city there's also the potential for angering the skaven as well down yeah there. yeah but i was but i was thinking like as a lich you don't have to care about hygiene at all i mean at that point as an immortal guy do you even care about personal looks as long as the fact that you're deadly and people can't even touch you for the fact that you probably are have like at least 19 plagues on your skeleton i think you're good <laughs> we need we need we need patient zero okay but where is he yeah well <laughs> we need patient zero problem is patient zero outlives the rest of the patients yeah you know what i've always thought is really cool is the paris catacombs if that was on there oh is that the one is that the one where it's like this endless underground catacombs thing and it's it's you have to have um a guide there because you can easily get lost and die Yep. from starvation because it's that fuck it's it's that big yeah that's the one it's like and hundreds if, yeah of yeah yeah oh bloody hell i'd love to go down there at some point but the thing me is i knowing me i'd probably sort of think to myself I, i'm not gonna get lost and then two seconds later <laughs> ah okay then yeah i wouldn't go in the restricted area because i'd just mm. probably die but i'd go in the area which you're allowed to go in that sounds pretty cool yeah Ukraine has one as well. I don't remember under which city. Probably Kiev. They've got a similar big um, sewer system. Or not sewer system, just um, lair under there. I don't know what they do with it or why they have it. Maybe it's a mine or something? I don't know. Probably a bomb shelter for the Russians when they yeah. attack. Could be that. Well, it's basically a question like, like the French catacombs and the number and piles of skeletons and different arrangements. That shit would be ideal for Necromancer. Do you have any idea how much material there is? Yeah, it'd be perfect. In where? In the uh, Paris the French catacombs. All oh, right, yeah, yeah. Yeah, just just have it go for a wander, and then on day f just find the corpse. Just oh, uh, another one. That's <laughs> my collection. Yeah, not oh. only fresh corpses, but also all the bones of the old ones that are there. There's heaps. There's probably mm. spirits I mean, down there too. Probably, I mean, there is literal arrangements of different bones, like, the, like uh, I don't know who did it, just some weird guy who basically went in there and just took a bunch of bones, made them into literal designs, like a range of skulls with the, like, the other bones, just like have their own kind of motif throughout the walls. Yeah. What, what, should, what should be that you got people that are thinking it's some kind of very important thing or whatnot? It, it could just it could just be like that one weird guy from uh, Gone with the Blast Wave, where it's it's oh no, it's it's art. I just I just thought you know I got lost, thought I'd may as well do this, you know, just may as well. Yeah. Got lost, made like I don't even know how long that thing is, like a a, a few miles to French catacombs. I have no clue how big, big it is, but that that shit is not small. Yeah, that takes it, that takes dedication. I'll look it up real quick. Alright. How big also... are the French catacombs? I don't know why, but when it came to the living lairs, I, what I had in mind, I had in mind like this great big undead whale that would just sort of swim from place to place and it would just snatch up yeah, like uh, sailors and whatnot that have gone overboard. Just, just to finish thinking... up on the catacombs, it's 186 miles or 300 kilometers in length. Okay! <laughs> Why? That is lined with skeletons. <sighs> Who found enough bodies to do that? Even back in Europe. Well, that's not. It's not. That's not even Europe. But still, who yeah. found enough bodies to line all that with bones? <laughs> it's insane. Christ. I mean, the plague was going on at one point. So I was about to say, when yeah. was a plague compared to this? Yeah, the, you had a few rats going around. You had, uh, you had, you had some fleas and ticks and whatnot. You had, you had all of that. You had your boy Genghis Khan launching bodies over walls. You know. <laughs> yeah. It's really awesome. Anyway, back to what you were saying about the whales. <laughs> yeah, that's cool. But! <laughs> uh, top 10 favorite plagues of all time. <laughs> yeah, how about the current one? Um, I'd, I'd rate it about three, 3 out of 10. You know, can't have a haircut anymore. Yeah, it sucks. It's... it's, it's it's just annoying. It's not as neat. Yeah, it's just one of the. Oh wow! Things. Yeah, I see what you mean by all the bone. Oh. Okay. Yeah. No. Yeah. Someone went weird. Someone had a fun time, and it was not a good idea back then. 
I, and because this is French, like I can imagine some somebody somewhere orchestrating this, going, "Did you put the femurs before the skulls?" No, 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 no. It goes femurs, skulls, hip bones, skulls, arm bones, skulls, vertebrae. Yeah. And Do yeah, the whole thing probably, over again. You're probably not wrong, considering the fact, like, even the walls are trying to at least have like an evenly uh, 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 distributed like amount of bones, like evenly, um, like the skulls. They're pretty much lined up. That, 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 that's an actual line. Somebody took the time to just figure out how it would be lined. Yeah, it's insane. That shit, like... <laughs> oh god, I've just had a, I just had a weird thought. Like you what? could, like you could, you could have it where it's, it's, it's this great big sort of artistic, artistic thing. What if the real reason is the person doing it was that cheap that they didn't want to buy materials, but there was bodies around, so they just decided, you know what? I know exactly what we can use for support. Yeah. I don't know. I mean, it, it's they just basically had the walls first and then added the corpses. And you can even see like the skulls uh, kind of starting to peel off on the right of this uh, last picture. Yeah, it's amazing. Looks awesome. Mm. Oh, it's perfect for uh, Necromancers. I don't know why this shit nobody did it in real life, though. <laughs> Not gonna lie, I kind of want to take uh, take some inspiration for this for my world now. Like, you yes. can. It's it's 186 miles. I think he has room to spare. I was yeah. gonna say it's not copyrighted, is it? <laughs> no, it's not. <laughs> you can't do that. We own the copyright for for doing weird shit. <laughs> <laughs> That's our thing. Oh bloody hell! Um, so what's yeah, another good kind of place for a living necromancer to set up? Um, I'd say a mountain, like in the mountain, a top a mountain, like like. The reason I'm saying that is because when it comes to normal layers and whatnot, um, there's going to be, I feel like, the, because a lot of these are going to be underground, aren't they? Like, you, you can have a building, but a building has a lot of issues with it. Yeah. And with, and especially with a building, you can lay siege to it. You can um, sap it. You can dig underground. You can start fires. You can weaken the building ex throughout. You can, and because it's a building, you know exactly where everything is, so you can target certain parts of it but if it's underground it's an entirely different story you either have to dig to it which will take time even more time because you have to figure out where it is and you've got to sort of break in and you've got to make sure you've got to break in in the right place so that you don't break in into the corpse disposal room it smells yeah. horrible um but if you're doing it in like in in some mountains and whatnot then it could help with a few things it could help with the ventilation because you could have a uh, vents so it would sort of like go through and if you're building it into a mountain then you can get up there like you can have corpses carrying like your skeletons carrying you up there if need be um and there's also and there's also because because it's a mountain you can very easily have like a, a conga line of of skeletons just start, just sort of like going down but any opposing force wanting to get up has to navigate they they can't send in like this great big wall of of bodies and throw them at you they've got to be very careful with it whereas because you're, you're dealing with corpses and of course you've got to make sure that you, you don't lose too many of them but you know what you, i mean like depending on how it works you could literally just have all your skeletons like click, click your fingers your skeletons throw themselves down the mountain and then you go down and then you just raise them all back up again you just find all the pizza uh pizzas you find all the pieces <laughs> you you, <laughs> you jigsaw them back together job done yeah so what you're telling me is you want to live like the grinch Exactly. The Grinch was the best necromancer. I've got such <laughs> a funny Grinch. mental image of like a Congo line of skeletons in the mountains now. Yeah, it was some maracas and just, just, just going... <laughs> ch -ch 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 -ch. <laughs> yeah. Maybe there's a banjo at the back. So, I mean, it is called the March of the Dead. They never specify how it's done. Yeah. Um, one problem I see with the mountains is it's like, it's probably a long way from resources. Mm, yeah. Yeah, Unless you. I, was also, I was also thinking, like, if somebody has, like, uh, like arrow units, if they have access to, like, I don't know, like, griffins or dragons, you're also going to be a, a bit of an issue. Yeah. Why not just have a dead bug? Like, what, what, if, what if you have it where, let's say, for example, you build uh, one up in the mountains, you have, like, a griffin attacking you because you've nicked one of its eggs for breakfast. So then you just kill the griffin. That's it. You've got a mount. That's, that's job done. That's one mount, but what if somebody just brings a fleet of griffins? Because, like, this dumbass thinks he's safe. I guess that at that point you have but, to go underground. Yeah, that's a good point. Unless so, you build into the mountain. 
Yeah, like caves in the mountains would be good, I guess. Oh, probably, yeah. But, like, um, one of the things I'm thinking, like, even for, like, the, um, like, a lich is basically make your lair into something famous. Or, like, um, for a lich in this case, it would probably be, like, under some, like, um, like, a uh, holy church or anything like that, just as, sick, as a sick joke. But, because it's, it's, it's famous. People are reluctant to even attack something if it means preserving whatever you're, uh, inside of. Like, Same if there's, like, idea. this ancient... Yeah, like if there's an ancient battlefield and there's like a, like a monuments and stuff, it's like there, there's plenty of bones. You can kind of just uh, make your lair underneath there and just kind of do your own thing. And it's like people are like, we gotta raid this place. And other people are like, what? No, my grandfather died here. I'm not just gonna let you destroy the entire area. Son, if you don't destroy it, I will. But either way, your your granddad's over there marching at us with maracas and a sword. <laughs> it's like, it's like, my, my dad, my granddad found this war, and right now he's coming over just to talk you down. Wait a minute, that, he, whoa, 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 whoa. <laughs> so at that point, you're basically holding something hostage, so they don't want to attack you because you're in some kind of sacred place or building or whatever. Yeah, like, I did. I think, like, oh, sorry, you first. All right, uh, because like, yeah, just having a necromancer layer where it's their force to kind of keep you around, more or less, is a good idea. I mean, I was thinking, like, um, at the points, like, uh, keeping a layer underneath the water supply, where if they destroyed your layer, they will be risking contaminating their entire supply, or at least, like, even just, like, um, pl uh, places where they would need the, their city to live. Just build my layer there. If they destroy it, they risk destroying that place as well. That's a great if, point. <laughs> if I'm going down, they're coming with me. I really like that point. That's a great point. Especially for... Um, sorry, go on. Oh, yeah. Um, I was, no, I was, I was just going to very quickly say that I did a, I did a story recently wherein you've got um, like demonic cultists that essentially make a chapel uh, near a village. And they design the chapel so that it fits in with the others across the country, so that it looks very similar. But on closer inspection, you can see it's, in, it's built purely in mockery. But if ah. you were just if you were just walking by, you wouldn't be able to tell. But if you got really close, then you could tell. So they could do the demonic stuff without people noticing. So you could have that kind of sort of twisted element to it. It's a good idea. I'd I'd say that works for the most point, except for like the uh, uh, at times where people are just like um trying to become like holy knights or just like um just other groups of like legitimate churches walking around checking the air. It's like, oh hey, you have this new church here. What's your religious like um. Uh, and you gotta choose your words wisely, because some, some, like, just factions of the holy users, uh, or just, like, their, uh, uh, gods, can just be very oppositional against each other. Mm. Yeah. So, what, so what religion are you? Um, you know, that one? Oh, okay, well, what's your god? Oh, you know, he's, uh, he's very... He, he gives us support, he, he gives us a lot of hands. <laughs> he, he, yeah, he, he gives us a lot of hands, he, he helps people out, he's, he's... Pretty, pretty good. Okay, okay. What, well, what, what's your doctrine? What's, what's, what's your rules? Um, <laughs> define rules. What about traps? Um, one, one idea I was thinking of, even though it's not so much as a trap for an you know, undead, uh, not like um, it, it's not lethal, but just basically it keeps people out. Um, it's it at, at, at first glance it appears to be like a wall of red, but you realize it's actually just a giant wall of flesh. Well, they're like, oh no, I guess that's just on display. Even though it's attached to this wall, nobody can really get through it. No, in reality, it's just a, like, I'd say like a solid block of about like, I don't know, like two to three feet of flesh that is always like, um, uh, how do I say, just kind of flexing and trying to make sure nothing can enter. But the moment the neck master comes in, it all just like slowly, uh, it all just relaxes and he basically just walk through it. But anybody else has to try to cut it down. Problem is, it's still a wild flesh. They cut off one piece, it'll flop down to like a lower uh, part, but then slowly glide back up to where it originally was. I was, I was gonna say for that you could mix uh, flesh with slime, so you could like so you know how in D and D how you got like those brick those cube slimes. Yeah. Like you could have that, but with flesh. And yeah. the other thing is, you could because you're gonna have this thing flexing. I can easily imagine a necromancer showing it off to another necromancer, going, "All right, mate. So you brought me here to flesh. Sorry, you brought me here to f to flex on me. What you got? <laughs> what you got? I got this. And you got like this great big flexing monstrosity, mate. <laughs> you're a bloody genius. <laughs> It'd be really good in like a tunnel or something. Hmm. I mean, yeah, or, or not... like or like a choke point. Yeah. 
it's, it's not just like a checkpoint. At times, you can even like just hide it in place so nobody even think like um, like you know, it's like so a place where necromancers are just kind of practicing their own stuff. Like you no, know, people don't question if there's a bunch of like flesh or bones just kind of like in those certain areas. But you just can, like you know, just leave your own doorways there because nobody knows how to enter it. Nobody can figure it out. You could except you. You could even have it like. Did you guys ever see that one film with like you know like the Blob? Yeah. Mm -hmm. Yeah. It's it's this it's this one sort of take on it's this one film that kind of does the whole sort of slime um, attacks uh, American town and the only one that can save it is uh, Bad Boy on a motorbike kind of thing, and oh. as you do and there's a scene in it in a in a cinema where the slime's basically on the ceiling and it's just sort of like taking people up into itself. Mm, yeah, like it's just oh, it's just grabbing people and sort of like sucking them up. So, so it's it's just it's just casually just like gone, gone, gone. And then when people realize it's there, they all they all start panicking. It also comes up through the drains and shit, doesn't it? Yeah, and it's also in the sewer system. It's very malleable. Yeah, the main problem I see with this idea of like the cube or whatever is just it's kind of conspicuous, and someone could just set it on fire, and then you've got a cooked sphincter that you can't use anymore. I'm trying to think, but like, if we combine it with the slime, I think it's going to be a lot harder to burn that shit. I wonder how it would taste. <laughs> it's it's not rotting, but it's still undead flesh. I'm pretty sure it's not cuisine. I mean, if we take Minecraft, for example, as an educator of uh, what happens when you eat rotten flesh, I mean, as long as you're still alive by the end of it. Um, I believe, like, what, uh, uh it was like, like, watching, like, um, a film theory about Wally and about what they're doing, like um, people just committing cannibalism. It, it it it's somewhat worse, but not really, because it like uh, human meat contains a lot of fat. So if if you basically just do that for a good few generations, you'll just end up looking like those guys in Wally. Like that <laughs> is not. That explains a lot. Yeah, it's just a very bad idea, typically. And that film just really... got darker. I was gonna say it's like, <laughs> yeah, I'm actually thinking of it now. How how do they sort out the food problem? <laughs> yeah. <laughs> How wait? How how do they how? Do, wait, they they have they have pizza on there because the, the, when when they get to Earth, the fat guy mentions that oh look we've got, we've planted a plant you can grow pizza with it. Um, you... in the movie, I don't think they actually showed anything. We just see them drinking out of cups. We never really see them actually like consuming. And, I, know, I know, but he, men he mentions he mentions the f he mentions the food, which means that do they have cows up there? What do they do for cheese? Do they have like like uh, with with Skaven? Do they just have people hooked up to machines where they just. That, that film just suddenly got dark actually holy shit okay <laughs> oh yeah no a romance story between an uh, between an apple and microsoft product has now just turned a bit twisted okay <laughs> um regarding caves as an idea there's like a couple of problems with them i think like you know how when you're hunting rabbits you can block all their exits or whatever and then yeah. you can just like smoke them out or whatever you've also got that the jack russell down there yeah yeah so like I think with caves, unless you've got like a portal or like a hidden exit, you could very easily get trapped in there. Um, for that, I kind of want to bring up the uh, Vietnamese because have you ever seen like pictures and diagrams of the of the little underground cave systems that they've got? I haven't actually. I should not really. No. Oh, let me let me get it up. Well, basically, it's the um because they're experts in guerrilla warfare. Uh, Vietnamese is it cave cave system? I've seen their traps, and they're brutal traps. No, not that one. It's... Oh, it's just what's, very what's... simple, but lethal. Yeah. Oh, what's the bloody... What? Um, it's, it, uh, you type in cave system, it comes up with the natural ones. I'm on about the man-made ones. Try uh... Viet Cong. Maybe that helps. Oh, yes. Viet Cong. Tunnel system. Here we go. Perfect. Cheers, lad. Right, <laughs> so let me, let me, let me send this. Jack so it's... The guy? So the general idea is that they would basically uh, be utilizing these since an early age, so they would get really accommodated to them. And what this would do is this would um, teach them, you know, for tunnel warfare when they needed it. So when the Americans attacked, the Americans had far superior firepower. They had far, they had like um, all these, all these things. They had napalm. They had they uh, they had McNamara's morons to send in his father. They had all the all the all of these things, all of these things, and but the Viet Cong had the geographical advantage in the sense where they didn't have um, like napalm to, to dish out. They didn't have flamethrowers. They didn't have uh, fortunate sun blasting in the background as an, as an attack helicopter just blasted an area. 
No, they had traps, they had guerrilla warfare, and they had the expertise and knowledge on how to utilize it. So it's like in um in like Forrest Gump, for example, you know how you got the film where in uh you got that one scene where Gump and I think it's Bubba uh, are talking to what's his name? Lieutenant Dan. And he says that uh, not to salute him because they could get sniped. Yeah. That that was that was a real issue that they that was a lot more common than people realize it was in the sense where you had people with with snipers very very easily because it's 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 vietnam they know the area you're you're only a guest there you're only visiting for this one war you've got no clue about what's what's there and what's not there so yeah, but man. yeah you had on uh do they have because uh, there's a picture wherein you um that shows that they've got a american sort of like throwing down uh, flashbangs and throwing down smoke and whatnot to try and smoke them out but they had built a tunnel um that was that the smoke would go out of in preparation for that oh. wow so so they did have a way of getting around it but the thing with these though is that they are very tight and confined spaces and i doubt a necromancer would kind of use any of this but if if one was to use a similar sort of strategy, then it could be sort of like maybe, um, like let's say say you're in a corridor and someone's smoke uh, smoking you out in in your underground area. You could have, uh, shoots or t or chimneys, uh, built into certain rooms, so that the smoke would easily clear out through that and go straight up. Even even holes in the wall would work. Yeah, this is an amazing system to look at. God, I feel so sorry oh, no, for those guys... American tr troops, man. God, that must have been terrible crawling through that. It, uh, it, it, it was horrible for both sides, believe it or not, because you had uh, the Americans were also blasting out like spooky, scary skeletons um, <laughs> every now and again. With big... no, no, I'm being serious. They blasted out, yeah. they blasted out like these haunting because of the superstition of um, of the Vietnamese and even the and and the Allies and whatnot that were helping them. Um, they were blasting out spooky, scary skeletons and horrible, ghostly, haunting noises, and the superstitions of the Vietnamese would basically have them freak out. So yeah. it would help. So it would help um, get them caught and captured and shot at and whatnot. It was actually that effective that they had to be very careful with how they used it because the Allies were freaking out as well. <laughs> there's there's a short there's a short film. Let me find it. There's a short film that you can watch that kind of goes into it. Yeah, I have um, heard about it before. It's very interesting. It really happens. I like uh, the, the the way the one main issue I know or at least recall about like the um what the uh what the U.S. did is just basically taking a bunch of planes, lining the uh, forest, napalm, saying that shit on fire. And Agent Orange that was what too. I call the most. Yeah. Right. I can go back. Oh, I'm put the, yeah, the, the, the video's there, so it's it's it kind of like gives details at the very end if you want to skip it, but it's a very good short, uh, very good short film. And I would recommend it. Awesome. I'll put oh, it okay. in the description or something. Mm. I don't want to kind of like go, uh, go back to the idea of like the undead whale. It's like, yeah, it's honestly like a good, like, um, that was something like a good layer. It's mobile. I was like, kind of thinking it's like just find like one, like, um, undead who has like a, like a wide landmass. Not undead, it's like an animal with a wide landmass that you can use as your own layer. Like, the, um, even though it's like normal, not normal DD, but it's like the, um, I believe the name is the Lion Turtle from the Avatar, the Last Airbender. Yeah, yeah, that yeah. That shit is big. That would be a perfect layer. Haul out of the shell, store your corpses there, just do your stuff on top. You have a literal mobile fortress. Do what you like. I was I was gonna say because I use the way that as an example, but because this is gonna this is gonna be in the fantasy world, this is gonna be in a fictional world where you're gonna have all kinds of different monsters and animals and whatnot. You yeah. could, you could very easily like you can do a whale, you can do a land turtle. You could even have, you could even have it wherein, in some kind of long forgotten war, a previous master lich that nearly took over the world, had created like these horrible um, creatures that served only as mobile bases for necromancers to use. So you could even have Ooh. it where you have like these wandering beasties in the ocean that have no purpose other than to go to necromancers and be attracted to them. So, so there could it could even be the case wherein if you've got like rogue necromancers in the world on ships or on islands, um, you could have like say the forces of good or 
paladins or you could have like uh, organizations that hunt these kinds of people and you could have them track and follow these beasties to find necromancers because of course these are going to be naturally drawn to them so it wo- it, it works out it's like using a sh- oh. it's like using a shark hunting of a shark to find sharks yeah i was just, I was just trying to think like um the one main issue I had, or at least in the uh, the world of D and D five E, about like making my lair like in the ocean, is that I have a bit of a fear of the leviathans. Those shit is scary. Yeah. It's like yeah. those guys can have like cultists up by the coast. They can just do a bunch of stuff. They're constantly experimenting on themselves. So it's like you don't know what to do every time. And they have a vast intelligence. So like if you see one, you're kind of fucked unless you're like high up in the food chain. But if you're just moving in there, you're not gonna have a good time. You have no options. See, um, before before my world is what it is now, I did actually have a sort of monstrous kind of multicultural forced city, I guess, in the sense that humanity had basically been eradicating species after species, monster after monster, and that in order to survive, they had all joined together and had created a base inside of the stomach of this great big monstrous. Uh, underwater leviathan type something so big that they can have a multi-layered city so you got layers oh, upon shit. layers in its stomach and there is still room left over for it to eat and consume stuff um that like, it's, it's that big so and the and the idea is that it would kind of like you'd have like these chains that have been sort of that are suspending uh, the, the the city in it and these would of course be attached to the walls and whatnot um and you'd have like different layers with different stuff on them. So you'd have like dryads, you'd have like uh, ogres and trolls, you'd have like undead, you'd have demons. You'd have all like the all of these different things. Um, a few right. a few issues like there's quite a few issues with it, of course. <laughs> but yeah. Uh, yeah, you could yeah you could very easily have that. I mean, you don't even need to have it sort of in the stomach. You could literally just have this great big sort of city or this lair or whatever built into the creature itself like i mean it's, it's you know how you have infections and whatnot you can have like um yeah like you know how when you when, let's say for example you think it gets infected and, and you'll see like this red line going towards your hand as the infection spreads through yeah trying like it's trying to get to like the veins and trying to like, sort of get to get to your bloodstream and whatnot yeah. you could yeah. easily have something like that or you could even or you could even have it where you have like this great big undead god kind of thing and Chose and chosen necromancers get the ability to make layers inside of parts of its rotting body. So, like, you could have, and because it's a god, you can have it as like this great big abstract thing. Nobody knows what it truly looks like because it's death. Nobody knows what death is, despite people like you know what death is, but it is still has this element of the unknown. So, you could have this god which encapsulates that element, and you could have um, layers inside of it. I had a crazy idea. Imagine like an underwater cave system, right? Mm-hmm. And you build one of All those right. constructs I talked about that's like the sphincter that squirts water away. And you basically oh, okay. set up like a pump system that drains this underwater cave. And then like if people are invading, you can just like flood parts of it and drown them. Like imagine you've got two sphincters set up in a corridor. And like you you let them in. And then you just like trap them in there by shutting them. And then you squirt water in and just drown them. Um, Baragos, mate. Yes, mate. Mate, I think the wolf sphincters are trying to drown us, mate. Well, <laughs> shit. Oh, well. Have we tried stabbing them? Yes, but this one seems to like it. <laughs> oh, wait a minute. <laughs> <laughs> oh, man. Crazy ideas. But I really like the idea of the underground, underwater whale or whatever that you're using as a mobile base. That's great. Mm. It would... Because that would most likely be for an undead, um, like like a lich or like an undead sort of necromancer. Would it work for a living one? Like, could that potentially work for a living one? It would. It would uh... be more difficult though, because you have to make sure there's always air in there and whatever. Mm. And you got to make sure yeah. that the gases don't make you faint. Yeah. So it's like just frankly going up. I feel like your best bet would probably just make the uh, the thing into a skeleton and start lining it up uh, and kind of grafting other bones on top of it, so it just becomes its own kind of base. In that case, in that case, you're better off using one of those Japanese ghost whales. To... I've heard of those. I can't remember exactly what they look like. There's like certain types. Uh, let me get it up. It's essentially. Um... It's a, it's a it's a whale skeleton and it's got like a oh. 
spiritual sort of like ectoplasmic thing Are around about it. it. So I'm just going to put an image in there. Um, so if if that is hard, and if you can actually stand on it, then you could sort of have that, or you could Fuck use that. Yeah. yeah. Like it's it's supposed to be the case where you'll see weird fish, the water turns red, so on and so forth. So that's could even out. could even have some Lovecrafty elements in there as well. Yeah. Um. Speaking that... of liches, um. There's some really good things you can do with like a lich's lair or an undead necromancer's lair in general. For example, you don't need air, right? So you could build yep. oh, really yeah. high, like on the top of Mount Everest or something, where no one can breathe. And or in the most burrow. toxic, like acrid swamps. So... Exactly. Yeah. Yeah. And you could just have like, drain it first, but yeah. Yeah, you could have like a complete vacuum inside your lair. No living are going to be able to breathe unless they go in there with like a ventilator and a oxygen tank. You could just like destroy their tanks pretty easily, and then they just die. Yeah, I mean, people would usually say, "Let's like we have to find a way to get an necromancer's lair." I have a cure for the miasma. <laughs> That's just the entrance miasma, head ass. <laughs> yeah. Oh no! It seems that he's dying of of this horrible toxic smell. Whatever should we do? I can help. Oh my god, a lich! Well, what can you do to help? I can kill him. That wouldn't help him. It'll stop the suffering. <laughs> yeah. Speaking of which, are you all suffering right now? I'm fine. Oh no, it's like about the uh, um character. <laughs> yeah, no, I'm just messing with you. <laughs> so <laughs> like, it's like like wait a minute. Did I phrase this wrong? <laughs> <laughs> um one other thing for like a sci fi setting, you could irradiate your, your layer. And just have it like you know, like Chernobyl in there. Oh yeah. yeah. I mean, isn't, isn't that get... isn't that how you get Necrons? Yeah, I think so. Wait a minute. I mean, I did have an idea at one point for a world that's basically um, got an undead. Because in in space, you do get. I I only know of one of them, but I think you can get like undead suns and whatnot. Um, so the idea is that you'd have like this undead sun, and it would irradiate the world, so that the only life that would grow there would be heavily. Uh, acc acc acclimated and evolved to this radiation. But the problem, though, is that because it's radiation, what can you do to it? I mean, it, like, you have Chernobyl, yeah, but life has already existed before Chernobyl happened. And you do have mushrooms, you do have, like, stuff growing there still, but if you have radiation early on, that, can life even grow in radiation? It depends on the life. Like, I'm sure that there's, like, you know those tiny little bugbear or water bears they're called? Tardigrades. Yeah, I think that's what they're called. Um, they're like these tiny little insect-looking things, and they're like basically immune to extreme cold, extreme yeah, heat. Yeah, that's how they grow. Uh, yeah. yeah, you can throw them in space, throw them out, and they just keep walking. You can put them in the deepest pressures. Just, yeah, they're, they're... Yeah. Yeah, so like life very, like that... Very, can, very durable. Yeah, life like that can survive for sure, but like stuff like humans, I don't think so. Yeah, or it's just kind of anatomy is too complex. Other species can eventually adapt, I think. Yeah. But for the, but for us, it is, we'd have to go through the same process, and that shit would take a while. Yeah. The problem, like, with the radiation, it's like it's, it's like that gamma radiation, right? That's like the well, one of the bad ones. And it basically just destroys the DNA. So your cells mm. can't duplicate anymore, and you just end up dying from that. And then the worst case is whenever you get angry, you turn into a great big green monster. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> so and it and it uh, causes an excessive amount of property damage. Yeah. <laughs> and collateral damage. Um, I'm kind of kind of thinking now because. <sighs> Almost like a sci-fi setting, you could very, very easily have a lair on the most toxic, inhospitable worlds, and because of the kind of planet it is, it the whole planet is essentially yours. You could just sort of, for thousands and thousands of years, you could just build this great big, massive, mega lair across the entirety of the planet. Yeah, and you don't even need a planet. You can just exist in outer space, because... You know, you don't need air, you don't care about cold or heat. You don't care about the radiation bombarding you. You pretty I much... I think if it's just, like, 
Sorry? Go on. It's okay. I was trying to think. I, f uh, I think if you set up in a certain way, so even it has certain, uh, like, it can do, uh, control its uh, movement a little bit, you just keep, like, yeah, as a satellite, just orbiting around the planet, but able to move so that if a meter comes over, you're not just kind of screwed. If you have some way of movement, but I was thinking, there's, like, no air or anything in space, so I'm not sure if making wings would work. No, you, what you'd need to do is you'd have some kind of, like, rocket. What you could do is, like, you could have, like, a gas chamber that's constantly building gas, and you just squirt that out in like a, a high pressure stream that would probably move you actually yeah probably i mean neck matchers on dead bodies it's kind of two things together mm. yeah unless you, unless you get like a body to kind of like go outside of your um craft or whatnot then you just have it like sort of paddle like like just start swimming <laughs> kicking its legs a bit so yeah. no that, that'd be, i think that'd be still going back to the original idea of just trying to use like that kind of movement but like if wings won't work i don't think paddling will either fair enough um what was i gonna say yeah for radiation because of how radiation works like with a with a lich they don't have to worry too much about radiation because they can just regenerate they can just repair themselves passively or just... actively oh, um what about like their lair because if there's a radiation involved surely the radiation would affect the lair it would weaken the walls it would um, um uh, it would mess it would mess with the undead it would i don't think it would have any effect on undead like um because it doesn't matter if the undead's dna is being broken down like it's no no it's live. it's uh have you ever seen chernobyl i've never like, seen not entirely no it's i i have so i'm an expert in this field haha -ha. oh, <laughs> um <laughs> The, the quick the quick is the, the quick is that basically radiation fires out these little tiny little bullets and they go through things and because it does this a lot it breaks it breaks things down so you can have it where after so much time uh, machinery will fail um, oh. stuff will break apart I, I didn't know that no the thing is I think that this also oh. applies to buildings but I actually don't know if it does because. Well. They have that thing called the sarcophagus, which is like a gigantic structure around the elephant's foot, made of concrete yeah. and whatever. Oh, is that the the Medusa one, the one where if you look at it, you're dead? That one. <laughs> yeah, well, the the elephant's foot is just the big molten reactor that's the the most radioactive yeah. part of the whole place. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Like kills you in less than twenty minutes exposure or something. Just make one of your dead absorb the radiation. Just, uh, just, and just getting his condom over some wall into some city and yeah. let that have fun. But the thing is, because of how radiated it is, how do you know that you're going to catapult it? Because, well, if it destroys the catapult, and because you, you've got to get close to it, unless the catapult is, you could, the, the catapult cannot be machinery because it's going to fail. And if somebody, and if somebody does do it, then you're going to, you're going to have to make sure that somebody carries it for 20 minutes and somebody picks it up after that person's dead and they carry it for another 20 minutes. <laughs> <laughs> imbue it with a disease like there's like a zombie disease so just imbue that with the radiation fair enough a radioactive zombie disease hmm. I guess a radioactive if... zombie disease Christ <laughs> that wait, wait, wait. is 2020 is not over yet don't give it any ideas <laughs> yeah I was, true. I was about to say that's like a Warhammer idea right there yeah um um yeah, I was just going to say more about the radiation thing. You could have it mm. in like a low enough dose that it's not destroying the undead, but it's still enough to kill the living and like maybe not immediately, but they they walk away and they get cancer and die. Stuff like that. Yeah. Yeah. You're going to with, with all this conversation about radiation and whatnot and like dying in 20 minutes, you're going to you're going to guarantee that there's going to be one person in the comments going like doing doing that specific time and then and then going lol i want that smh emoji 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 <laughs> oh yeah there'll be like the fact checkers uh, saying that we're full of shit because we don't know science and like that's yeah true. I, I don't know like what i'm talking about really just <laughs> like i don't <laughs> i mean i don't think anyone here does <laughs> well that's great that's <laughs> Like we, sure, we, we are top sign we are top scientists. Yeah. Like I have like a vague idea. Okay, like gamma radiation bad. It destroys DNA, but I don't know 
if that would like dissolve an undead or something. I have no it, idea. It probably. I mean, like, have you seen? Have you seen what happened to 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 corpses that has been affected by radiation? I haven't. No. Oh, let me get up a picture. Because when it comes to human bodies, uh, radiation, death. Uh, do I? Where's all the graphic? Where's all the graphic ones? Where's? Come on. Where's? Where's? Chop, chop. You're not helping me here, Google. Well, the thing with radiation is that it's like energy, right? So it could definitely cook something. Oh yeah, that uh, explode people, right? Sorry, what was that? I'm just going through the thought process. Like the fact that like it, uh, it creates heat. Can you just like make it a way to explode the living? Like just mess with the internal gases. Yeah, I think so for sure. You'd need a a very Shit. powerful type of radiation and the correct kind because like um there's ionizing radiation and that's the the deadly one that's like the gamma rays or whatever that destroy the dna there's also non-ionizing radiation and that's like light from like a lamp or something and that's totally fine but it does give off heat so you won't get dna damage but you will get cooked so um, I think shit. I think I think it's this one. But it's basically like a mummified dog. Like you, you know how because in, in Chernobyl Ooh. when it was when the effect was like proper realized in I say proper realized is, is the Russian government uh, when the effect was semi realized and they sent people in to sort it and they had people with guns going around shooting all the animals to prevent them from suffering a horrible death. Uh, one or two I think were kind of managed, managed to avoid this and they did manage to die and you can see that the corpses have been sort of mummified to a degree i'm trying to find like uh, a human one um i'm trying to think of what's the, the best way of because uh... i know that one per there was this one person that was kept alive forcibly oh, yeah. to see how long to see yeah. how long somebody would uh poor could... bastard man in japan wasn't yeah. it? yes yeah that's it uh japan yeah, by the end of Here it, go, his radiation. entire body was dead, and his heart was, like, the only thing that worked. And it was, like, oh. an undead heart, basically. It was really fucked up. Didn't he, like, die a few times, but they kept bringing him back? Yep, that's great. Oh, uh, God. Yikes. Fuck. Uh, you can't show that to YouTube. <laughs> Hell we can no. Just, just, blur it, just blur it over. Just blur it over and put, and put like, words that say, that say happy content. <laughs> 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 Jesus they'll Christ. only see black and red what I mean, like ad advertiser friendly content <laughs> man that is the problem with not allowing people to die because mm. like this dude was like being destroyed by crazy radiation and but they had the legal obligation to keep him alive because they're not allowed to just let someone die so this guy is in like agony was for it, months was it was it for that, or was it for the science of we we need, we need to see what happens? We have to know what happens. It was thing, both. Or... It was both. Oh, they were okay. constantly experimenting on him. Mm. There was like one point where he oh. says, "I'm not a guinea pig." Like while he could still talk, he lost the ability to talk after a while. <laughs> that dude was in pure hell. And and you you got all the other like you really should watch the novel because they go into the details of it um of what happens and the show and, the, and even with how bad like they show the show what happens to the people they still had to kind of dumb it down a bit because what they were originally going to show if i remember correctly it was way too extreme it was realistic but it was too extreme yeah um but it what is it that happens because if i remember correctly it, like the vein sort of your immune system stops and your and your veins sort of start to melt and yeah, he was being it like, gets, broken gets... down by like mold and shit. He had mold growing on his skin. Yeah, because he had no immune yeah, system I... to fight it off. Does he have any skin on him? I'm just looking no, at him, and it kept it kept falling off because right. his cells couldn't divide anymore, so he couldn't keep mm. you know growing skin. So his skin was just like slowing off him. Terrible shit, See, man. Like, we may be the necromancers, but we're not that kind of uh, <laughs> batshit crazy. No. We're batshit crazy, but we're not that kind. Mm. Yeah. You can't even do anything with it. I mean, what are you going to do? Haha, -ha, behold, nightmare fuel. Yeah. <laughs> it I deals mean... five psychological damage. 
I mean, you're. I, I mean, again, like uh, with normal psychological damage, you have like your thing with the um the skin husks. I forgot what you called them again. Just, like, oh, the husks. Monsters. Yeah, yeah. It's it's um it's the ones where when when somebody's dead or you got it's where necromancers in in world has taken the soul from somebody and it turns the corpse into a husk and of course because they're going to be um, eco friendly in the sense of they don't want to waste anything they would still resurrect the corpse and of course would basically be the, a, a husk it would be like a really kind of like uh, skinny sort of not it's like a mix between a zombie and a mummy it's not a full zombie but it's not a mummy either I guess. Damn. Yeah, it's... Like, we do experimentation, but fuck that. <laughs> <laughs> Alright, let's change the topic away from that poor guy. Uh, how about... more locations oh, um, for... Oh, go on. Yep. Um, I was thinking, like, uh, one thing is, like, um... How would you, uh, like, place your lair and location uh, uh, if you had your own cult going on for you? Like you're like such like a master neck master master lich that you actually ha really have your own followers. How would you handle that cult, and where would you keep your lair, knowing that you do have one? This is easy. I would make it in America, and I would turn it into a church for the tax evasion. And <laughs> then what I do, and then what I do is because and because it's a religion and because it's a cult and all of that, I'd get away with pretty much doing anything I want, and job done. Yeah, you could easily have like a very publicly pleasing face and then like a back end that's all necromancy and stuff like that yeah but, what, what, but like what if you're like a lich like you actually can't have any face you can still have uh... beards, like um sexy vampires or something that'd bring the people in i was gonna actually, say or, or you could you could do like some kind of because people people are always desperate you, you have desperate people all over the world but what you could do is you could like put a mask on you could have like this youtube channel patreon going and the idea is that only the chosen ones get immortality let me show you shoot self gets up see yeah oh another thing you could do is you could engineer a, like a disease infect people with it and then provide the cure because you you made that disease as a lich kind of like um what do you call that is it uh is it fraud? i was gonna say a joke i was gonna say a joke about covid right there but it's probably <laughs> best not to right now <laughs> yeah, yeah. <laughs> <laughs> probably i don't know at this point um for a lure, for a lure. It's kind of like I was gonna. I, I, I don't know. Why, I keep thinking real worlds. Um, real world, of what to do it in real world, but we're gonna do it in fantasy world. Um, uh, let me think. Yeah, it's like where would you keep it? Like, I, I'm probably just gonna stick with my original idea of building it into a monument or something they cannot destroy, even if they mm -hmm. want to. For the uh, for, for the zombie, bat, it's like either monumental or it's essential. The only, the only example that I kind of have for this is is modern Minecraft because, and that was very PvP raiding. Uh, well, even without the raiding and even without the PvP, you, you still had griefing, you still had stuff going on. So yeah, the, so what I did was I always did it underground. I'd have like this great big massive forest above so that monsters would spawn, and I'd put and I'd have it so that undead would, spectral undead, would appear. <clears throat> pardon me. <laughs> Whenever somebody gets close, uh, Spectral Undead would appear and attack them. And because uh, they they attack signal armor, these people just instantly die. Have no clue what happened to them. Um, so you have that. But it would be it would kind of like be a great big necropolis. So you build it into the ground. It's this great big complex, um, m massive structure that only you know how to navigate. And anyone else navigating it would get very very confused very quickly. This combined with the undead and combined with all kinds of other stuff you throw in, because you can it, it, you're not just limited to undeads that come out and go a boogie 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 <laughs> and scare pe and, and scare people because you can have undead that do other stuff. Like take poltergeists for example, they move things, right? Yeah. What if you was to have one um, or a type of undead that would affect the soul of another person to cause disorientation, to cause problems, to cause them to be confused, to you know. Like, like you know how uh, when people get lost, and like you ever seen films where people, where people get lost in the woods and they go through like this a lot of mental gymnastics when it comes to it. Yeah, or, or like you're you've been out there for so many days, you're confused, you're disoriented, you're walking around, you've got no clue where you are. Imagine that, but accelerated. Mm. Oh, yikes! And you could even—I mean, you could even have like you could expand on that. You could have a uh, spectral dead or ghosts or whatnot that mess with your armor, your items, like 
there's nothing stopping a poltergeist from making your sword fly out of your hand, be thrown across the room, and attract more attention. There's nothing stopping one from rummaging in your bags and, you know, breaking potions in your bags, ruining everything. Like, there's there's a lot that, that can be done. Yeah. So you're not just limited to that. And man, I can't wait for that ghost episode where we can discuss that stuff in more detail. Oh, yeah. Yeah. But, like, yeah, I'm not so sure, like, where I would place it. Like, again, like, probably, like, monumental stuff. But if there's, um, like, uh, points in time where the monuments are outside a city, I am not entirely sure. I'm a big fan of hiding stuff in plain sight. Um, there's a good yeah. example of this in the Warhammer books, the Vampire Wars, to be specific. There's this right. one kind of vampire clan. I believe it's the Lamians. And they're, like, the ones that look beautiful and whatever. Ye yeah, um, yeah, yeah. I think yeah. I still need. I still need to play a campaign with Kalida. Is it Kalida? Yeah. It's, yeah. Uh, yeah. Um, this isn't in the game. It's um in like the the books. But mm. in any case, uh, they the setup is like these beautiful prostitutes essentially. And Con the, is the it, people... are they prostitutes or are they like concubines for lords and whatnot? Kings more more so concubines. Yeah, they're like they're okay, high end, okay. high end. Mm. Mm. And they're, they're basically loved by the people. and I can't like, imagine why. Yeah. And, um, you know, people, like, protect them because they like them and they're beautiful and whatever. And they're even able to drain blood from the people without them, like, really knowing it because of their illusion magics and stuff. And they're just existing in plain sight within the city. They're not, like, murdering anyone. So they're kind of just, like, existing there and it's no problem. That would also work for a necromancer. There's a lot of jokes to be made there. I'm just, I'm just, <laughs> I'm just, I'm just, I'm just biting my tongue. Okay, go for it. <laughs> um, <laughs> no, I was gonna say it's, it's, it's like uh, you know the sucking blood and people don't realize it. I wonder why. <laughs> um, oh. <laughs> uh, what else was I gonna say? So when it comes to hiding in plain sight, uh, what mm. if, say for example. Because you could, there's a there's a lot you could really do with that. Not just with concubines and vampires and whatnot, but you could have, say, um, abandoned cities. You could, oh, you could even sort of, oh, you know, what's his name? Harkon from Skyrim. Oh, uh, okay. I can know you this. remind me who that is? Oh, okay. So when you're doing Dawn Guard and you meet that guy who has that one animation where he walks back and forth a little bit and it looks <laughs> oh, a bit yeah. special and then he goes back into the normal standing uh, thing for the rest of the game, that one. Yeah. He turns, he turns you into a vampire lord, has a daughter he wants to sacrifice, you know, exiled his wife to the Shadow Realm. Right. Okay. Well, actually, actually, no, her wife exiled herself to the Shadow Realm, etc., etc., etc. That guy. Okay. Him. Um,. Because when you, when you talk to him, doesn't he say that uh, he sacrificed like what so many thousands of his own people back when he was a king to become a vam like to become a vampire lord? What if he I'm was actually... to have? Uh, yeah. I'm, I'm sorry, it's like I don't I don't recall him saying that, but he might have. I might just look this up real quick. Yeah. yeah. Um. Why not? Why not have like a king or or some kind of monarchy that wants immortality? Because I mean, it's going to be fancy. If you aren't going to have monarchies, you're going to have vampires. You're going to have people. You're going to have like oligarchs. You're going to have like people in in command and people in charge and whatnot. Yeah. Um. Why not? Why not have it? We got these people that have that want this. Like they want immortality. They want power, and they're going to want to do anything to achieve it. You could very easily have a very charming, very casual, very lucrative individual that come that swaggers in. And goes. So I heard you want immortality. Sort me out, and and it's it's. It, I'll I'll help you out. Kind of yeah. like Kelfazad in Scholomans, like um, where he goes to them, and and he's like, "Yo, give me a place to stay, and and I'll get you stuff." And they're like, "Yeah, sure." And then fast forward, and it becomes an undead school. And on the note yeah. of vampires and stuff, and hiding in plain sight, there's also the Count of Skingrad in Oblivion, who's a vampire, and he's just existing there with no problem. Because he hides it I well. I haven't played the blue. I only got so far with Oblivion. I think I got to the point where I met the, the village where everybody was invisible. I'm thinking to myself, where the hell is everyone? And then somebody <laughs> was talking to me, and then they, and then they, and they, and they, and they exited the game because it scared the shit out of me. <laughs> <laughs> That's ails well. Yeah, uh, you should probably play it again. Get yourself a good mod like um, Necromancy and Lichdom or the Epic Necromancy Maybe. mod. 
I just I can't understand the persuasion um, system because it, it comes up with this sort of mathematical pie chart, yeah, and it's no, like it's what? I can explain. Mate, no mate, mate I just I just want to get past to stab somebody in prison. Just just let me. Here's some gold. Take it. <laughs> yeah, so basically, um, there's these like sort of uh, pie things, right? And they're filled with yellow stuff. And the higher the yellow stuff, the more powerful. But people react differently to different kinds of yellow stuff. Like some people like boasting, other people like, um, I don't know, storytelling or whatever. And you have to like uh, trial right. and error to find which ones they like. And then you, you keep spinning oh, the wheel okay. and yeah. It's a bit convoluted, oh, so yeah, it's... but it's better than Skyrim where there's nothing. I, I didn't like that they completely removed that. Yeah, no, no, coming. they have it in Skyrim. It's just, it's just in Skyrim that they have a point system. So it's, 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 it's the case wherein if you want, to, if you want to uh, get that one dialogue option, you need to have t uh, t thirty in speechcraft. But in order to get that, you either sell a lot or you talk to people. So it's, it's broken. It's immensely, yeah. There is nothing in Skyrim. But Skyrim can go bugger itself. Yeah. Yeah. Also, yeah, I just looked it up. Yeah, Maharkon was a king, and yeah, he did sacrifice a thousand innocents. That's it. Um, you know, for the for the Warhammer thing, I keep thinking of reading the books because, like, the lore interests me to some degree. But the thing is, it's like I found out what happens in End Times, and it just removes any desire to know about the lore to that degree. It depends on whether or not spoilers bother you. Like, I'm the kind of person that I don't care about spoilers, so. Oh no, I... it's not that. It's just it's just it's the bad storytelling that I really don't like. Oh. It's like it's like um, it's like say for example you watch all of Avatar: The Last Airbender, then you go then you watch Korra, and then you get so far and then you think to yourself, I'm stopping this, I'm stopping this, I'm stopping this. Why? Why is the plot so bad? Why? Yeah, it's like know. it's like watching it's like watching Castlevania and then Dracula uh, decides, you know what? I don't want to be evil anymore, and so he just doesn't for no reason. I don't oh. know the overall plot of Warhammer well enough to say if it's all bad because I've really just I know the Warhammer game like Total War Warhammer, mm -hmm. then I've read like maybe three books i've read nagash the the whole trilogy or whatever i've read um another one that was about neferata and i've read something else i can't remember the vampire wars that's it uh well basically in end times um because games workshop was trying to focus more on 40k and uh, then fantasy i think that they were trying to sort of just put an end to fantasy so they could f put, uh, focus on other stuff so what they did was, is they released a book, um, or they just, whatever it was, they did a thing called End Times, and the idea is that everyone's either dead or dying, or not accounted for, and it would kind of bring in Age of Sigmar, or Age of Sigmar would kind of come later on. But it's like, take, uh, for example, um, Grimgor. Yeah, Grimgor Reinhardt. Big boy Grimgor Reinhardt. You know him. Yeah. He gets he gets killed by what's uh, what's his name? You know uh, the ever chosen that chaos guy with the three eyes. Yeah. Yeah. It, if I remember correctly, he gets killed by that guy. Why? Yeah. He's a wimp. <laughs> he gets like oh. he spawns he spawns in with his chaos lads. Just. just... <laughs> Why? <laughs> I mean, yeah. that's, that's one gripe, but there's a lot. And it just gets very, very horrible very quickly. What if you just yeah, focus... Just... Sorry, go on. Uh, no, it's just like, isn't that just Warhammer in a nutshell? It gets very horrible. Uh, I mean, if... In what way? Oh, you mean like... like the, do you mean like the Grimdark way? Probably. There's just a multiple ways of getting horrible in that universe. Like I'm, I'm all about the storytelling. That like, kind of it gets really, really good until end times, and then nobody liked that. But GW insists it's still canon, and despite and despite this, the Total War, uh, Warhammer Two game kind of like goes against it in some ways. So, for example, I think in the book, uh, you know, the Exiles of Nehek, I think. Yeah. Well, who are they? Who are they? Aren't they led by Ka uh, Kartep? Katep. Yep. So the led. So the led by. Yeah, so, the, so they're led by him, and I think in End Times, he goes to warn Cetra that uh, Nagash is coming back. Cetra kills him in response because he's exiled and he's meant to stay exiled, but I think in um, Warhammer 2, Kartep goes to Cetra and says, My boy, guess who's coming back? Who? Nagash. My boy, sla I'm going to slap you on the back. Get in here, we're going to have a big cuddle, we're going to have a big hug, let's, let's go fuck him up. 
<laughs> yeah. Um, there is hope. There is hope. Just one thing about the whole Warhammer thing. Um, there's pretty much... There's so many settings that are kind of ruined by just stupid stuff happening after a while. Like, for example, mm. in the Forgotten Realms, right? A lot of people hate the Spell Plague because it, you know... If you don't know what the spell take is, basically, they had D and D three point five and all the lore about that, and then either for the fourth edition D and D or the fifth edition, I don't remember which, they decided right. they just wanted to kind of demolish most of the existing lore and make everything new, and they did that with this spell plague where like uh, oh, the yeah. the goddess of magic got assassinated or something, and it caused this gigantic cataclysm, and Neverwinter was wiped off the map. And like just heaps of stuff like that, yeah. Neverwinter's a ruin in modern D and D. Wasn't isn't Neverwinter like an important place? Yeah, it is. I I don't I don't know that much for D and D though. I like I know that there are there's quite a bit of stuff, but I mean there yeah. is a lot of stuff. It's D and D, but Christ. So like that wasn't stuff. Also, like a, was like wasn't there also like around the time like when like the um. I forgot it was like the uh, like thirteenth or fourteenth tier spell was cast and everything went haywire. Then Dragonborn like areas and cities from the other world just kind of popped in. Yeah, it was something like that. And um, that was just a weird time. yeah, so basically, I don't really care too much about that. I just focus on the books and the setting that I like, which is like the bits before that. Yeah. And I guess you could do the same with Warhammer, like maybe they screwed up the story in your opinion, but you can still read the books from before that and mm. enjoy that. I would say something, but the thing is, I've got, I, that is exactly what I do when it comes to Halo. It's like everything before um, Halo 4, and well, maybe Halo 4, I, I, I really do enjoy and love, but anything afterwards, no, just no, just no, just no, just no, just no, just no. <laughs> um, question. So to be <laughs> we got sidetracked. I think that's yeah. my fault. So apologies for that. It's um, <laughs> fine. When it comes to when it comes to the whole thing of having a lair, now the spell plague, I've got no clue what it does, but it's a plague, so it spreads. So what I'm curious to know is when it comes to say, for example, you've got a lichy boy or a necro boy, or you got like a living lad in a lair somewhere. Say for example, the world has gone to shit. You've got a uh, plague being spread everywhere because these people are self isolating. If if they were if one of them was to spread it or if or if one of them or uh, say there's a plague going around, what is the likelihood of them surviving it? Because they're going to be with a ton of undead anyway, and if and if the and if the corpses that they're raising can act as carriers for some kind of plague of the year, then because because the, when it comes to it, they're not going to be in the most um, clean and hygienic of places, are they? I... So when it comes to disease and whatnot, how, what are they doing for that? As far as I know disease needs living things to reproduce in so like there's no way that the cold is going into some rotten lungs or something i think no i mean i mean i mean like let's say i mean let's say for example that a disease kills somebody can't the corpse still have it like can't the corpse still be infected with it for a time just like when... uh, depends in certain situations there is like a, a certain times where people uh become carriers for disease without even knowing it like, I can't remember exactly, but it's like this one lady uh, who is kind of like going around from place to place, like a. Um, oh, I super spreader. What... Yeah, super spreader. It's so, like, I can't remember her exact occupation. She showed no symptoms about the disease whatsoever. Wherever she went and where she had to give somebody food, they would start showing the, the sickness and disease immediately. She wouldn't believe for herself because she never had any issues, but it was evident that it, she was the cause. She just carried it without knowing it. So I yeah. think so, at certain points, if this. Uh, it depends on the disease itself as well, but it's probably possible for the undead to be able to still carry disease. I think I know who you're on about, and I'm trying to remember her bloody name, because... Didn't she I have, like, a nick... There was I, what? I, I, I can't remember her name. I, I She probably did have a nickname, but yeah, there's just, like, a whole case of just people trying to figure out, like, why are people getting sick? We have, like, no a sickness outbreak going on. Who is... Wait, who is this? What's her name? And it's kind of the, the whole case. But the mm. thing is, it's like, if someone had the disease and they died, I don't think the disease would be able to linger in that corpse for more than a week, depending mm. on the disease or whatever. Because, like, taking the example of the currently going around disease that we won't name, it dies after three days of being, like, on metal surfaces. 
and then like for some other surfaces it dies quicker or a bit slower something like that so it's it's not like the zombie is going to have this thing forever it might have it for a week or whatever however long it takes till it dies i was gonna say why not just, why not just slap a zombie on the drying rack and just leave it to it yeah <laughs> just just uh, peg your washing out just pe peg your dead out <laughs> You could just cook your zombies, have them like a bit charred. Mm. Slap them in the oven. Slap <laughs> them into the oven. Yeah. Just trying to think. First place I got me into like a thought process of what will living do when like a zombie outbreak comes out? Because like okay, they uh like the zombie outbreak happens, they probably eventually find a cure. How would you keep that buried to the point where the living don't uh, where the living they can't use the uh, same cure again? Like, how would you be able to, like, keep it, like, distinct enough, uh, or, like, a unique enough strain where living are like, ah, oh, shit, the cure's not working? Really? All you need is time, because the diseases are constantly evolving. Yesterday's mm -hmm. cure won't fix today's disease, like, at, after a certain point. Like, you know how with the whole uh, feeding animals antibiotics, basically, like, the animals in factory farms or whatever are kept in conditions where... Everything yeah. is so bad that they require constant antibiotics to survive. And as a result of that, the diseases are becoming resistant to the antibiotics. Yeah, and then they're spreading ah. their and then they're spreading their germ genetic and material to other um yeah. to other parts of the disease. So then it's like you you get this with humans as well, when humans abuse uh, antibiotics and cures and whatnot, we're in the disease will over time become re resistant to it, similar to how humans become resistant to some diseases, like take the plague, for example. And then they'll spread it, and then you'll have superbugs that, because they're resistant to the medicine, you need new medicine, which will take years and God knows how much research and development to do. Yeah. So which is why when it... Yeah. I was just going to say, so basically all you need is enough time for the disease to evolve a bit, and then people will be fucked again. Hmm. What about what, what about magical diseases when it comes to it? Like, actually, no. Wait, wait. wait. What well, if for the lair, you had a disease field? Mm -hmm. So the yeah. idea is that you know how you got like stasis fields, you got like shields, you got like these great big sorts of like big bubbles or circles or orbs around a uh, a lair or an area that to keep people out. What if you had it? wherein you had like a magical one where whenever somebody enters this area, they are infected. So like a um, how do I say this? Like a field of decay. Pretty much, except or... instead of rotting, it does whatever the disease does. So it could be that it turns into a zombie. It could be that it decays them. It could even be that they completely forget where they are and then think, "So where am I? I know what I need to do. What was I doing again? I know what I need to do. I need to go home and hug as many people as possible." <laughs> oh, okay. I think you could achieve this pretty easily, even without magic. You just need a chamber with heaps of rotting corpses in it. The putrid air would just infect people, I believe. Fair enough. I, the probably probably the best way is just like just keep your like supply of bodies just right around there. Probably even like a yeah. trap door, maybe just throw them in there. They're trapped. They can't do shit. There's no walls. I mean, it, it's just literal. Like the only way up is through some way of flying. But the trap door is shut, and you're in room with a bunch of rotting bodies. Actually, mm. I can tell a funny story from Keeper RL. Do you know that game? Uh, not really, no. Uh, no. It's basically like a little dungeon building, kind of like an Overlord kind of game. But Ooh. you build a lair, and you'd like it so high for hentai. Anyway, um, All right. I got a video on it too. But anyway, when the corpses are rotting, they make this like poison gas. So I decided to defend my lair. I'd put all the, all the corpses right in the first chamber. So I had this like constant poison gas thing going on. So anyone who entered the lair would get poisoned, basically. You could do something oh, right. like that. Yeah, that sounds about right. It's like one way don't, of they, the lair. don't they have that in Overlords? Like, because um, um, for for the for the great tomb of Nazarik, uh, for what isn't it made in a because isn't it located in a terrible swamp? Then you have all of these um, different floors, and then like in the treasury, they've got tons of poison and. Uh, like a very toxic smog, and if you don't have um, poison uh, resistance, you're dead. 
I'm not sure about the uh, treasury. I know, like the uh, in the original Great of Nazarick, where uh, worst place was. Yeah, there was a swamp around it. The catacombs were just built a bunch of skeletons. There's no real zombies because for some they want to keep that place spec clean. Mm. But like around like the, uh, near like the lower floors, like the yeah. um, I forgot it was like the uh, the throne room and those kind of general areas. The chandeliers were not real. Were not chandeliers at all. They're actually like uh like sophisticated traps where even like a full uh, a full uh, party of like elite level players could not even go through it if they tried their damnness. So it's just like a bunch of pretty damn strong stuff inside of that layer. I don't recall any use of diseases or actually seeing anything like that like floating around. It's just more like they use uh, a good amount of brute strength and trickery. Like at, at some point they build like. Oh, sorry, sorry Carl. Like, um, inside the lair, like, as well as, like, um, I think before the actual, uh, throne room, there's just, like, the Ring of Solomon, or, like, the, de like, 99 Demons of Solomon right there. So, like, a bunch of statues, and somebody breaks in, they all become a a active. Um, it was, it was, it was in the books, it was in the books, and it was mentioned wherein, when they were going down to talk with Pandora's actor, um, I think they mentioned it there, wherein, you get wherein you go in, and if you don't have like because of the defensive measures that they've got against the poison down there, if you don't have poison immunity, or if you don't have an item that grants you poison immunity, then you are pretty much dead. So I think it was like the case wherein one or two, um, like when visiting, one or two of the people with irons uh, had to have make sure that they have that. Hmm. Not sure, like. The closest thing I can think of, like, uh, with just being around Pandora's actor, was where if he had the ring going into the treasury itself, the golems would attack you because you're not supposed to have that while going in there. Yes. Yeah, that's, that's not really like a real poison. That's just the golems be, uh, becoming all alive. It's like your dumbass actually has the ring on. <laughs> um, hold like on, I'm being, it's... I'm being shouted. Hold on a minute. No problem. I'll be back in. I'll be back in about five minutes, maybe. Just need to see all what right. I'm wanted for. No problem. Right. So, while he's gone, we can summarize a little bit. So, we've talked about sewers, we've talked about caves, we've talked about underwater layers, we've talked about layers in space, we've talked about layers that are like high on mountains where people can't breathe properly, we've talked about layers hidden in plain sight. Is there anything else we're missing? We also talked. I we talked a little bit about cultists, but I think we got sidetracked. But I think we have like a decent info on it. Yeah. And we also talked about layers like yeah, hiding place sites. Also like just hiding in monuments or places where they really shouldn't be able to destroy the layer because we just kind of made a monstrosity out of it. And also like the vampire concubine thing, or like the yeah. count of Skingred that's also hiding in plain sight posing as a religious organization or something I'm trying to think like mo like moving layers is a cool idea but the problem is it's very obvious so it's not really yeah. a good work that can uh it's not really a plan that can work out in the long run i think the undead whale is a really good idea for mobile layer i mean yeah the sea it's just a really depth fucking thing you cannot find stuff in that place like, the only reason why I'd rather not build a, lay a lair in the D&D uh, &D 5 year world is because of the fact that, like, um, you know, the Leviathans things exist. I'm not gonna build my stuff while those guys are around. <laughs> Hell no. Um, one thing that we haven't really talked about yet, what about sort of layers that are made of flesh and stuff? Like, imagine... Oh yeah, we haven't, we haven't really mentioned, like, uh, living layers or even yeah, talked about that. Yeah, exactly. <laughs> That's real quick. What's that uh, game you said that you were saying? Like, uh, what's it called again? Keeper RL. Keeper RL. I'll, I'll look into that. Yeah, it's a great game. I got a video on it too. Um, huh. So All yeah, right. living layers. The biggest problem I see with that is like, people could set fire to them. People can probably disease them. Then you've got your living layer falling apart. Uh, they can probably poison it because it's like a flesh organism. Unless it's all undead think. flesh. If you try to give like a balance of undead flesh as well as 
Yeah, I think that like ideally for an undead lair, you want to have it like a uh, a balance of bones, undead flesh, and slimes. Yeah. Like slimes in general just kind of help out the situation in kind of, uh, terms of like a um a fire. Like make that shit fire fireproof. That's like one less thing they can do. Yeah, I'm gonna go. Bones can. Oh, sorry. It's okay. I'm gonna go ahead and say that I don't like the idea of a living lair because I feel like it's conspicuous. It's kind of vulnerable. It probably stinks. It's probably not as good as like a lair that's made of actual stone or something. Like not as strong. You can probably cut into it. Yeah, that doesn't mention. I think expansion would be pretty difficult inside a um, living lair. Like you have to like start doing like be very careful to make sure you don't mess with anything else as you start to like you know add more pieces to it. Yeah, it gets great gross points though. Like it's really gross. Oh yeah. Oh, I just thought of something. Mm -hmm. A defense mechanism, where you basically strap a bunch of lungs from a a, a bunch of different creatures, and the moment somebody uh, one of the living comes in. It screams like mad to the point where it can pop their eardrums. Shit. Yeah. That would be a very lethal defense weapon that the undead and uh, skeletons and your lich would not care about because they have no eardrums. Yeah. The living do. That's an issue pretty much anything that's alive. Yeah, for sure. Sonic weaponry is pretty powerful in general. True. Like if you so hit someone not... with like a big sonic blast, they'll like throw up and everything. Oh yeah. It's like I'd rather not use that kind of weapon, but if shit's about to go down, I'd probably set that up. Yeah. That's, I'm kind that's of the only exam Sorry, Sorry. go on. Uh, so like, like, uh, that's like probably like the only example I would really think of in terms yeah. of something like that. Okay. It's like like that kind of with Sonic Weapon, yeah, they're like that, but as Necromancer, we do a bunch of dumb shit, but I'd rather not do like uh, anything that goes over the limit. Like, I feel like we have our own kind of forms of Geneva Convention. Yeah. I kind of feel like we've probably discussed everything there is to discuss about a lair. Right, I'm back. It was... Oh. Yeah, I've, got, I've got food. Okay. Basically, while you were gone, we just recapped on what we've discussed, and we talked a little bit about the living lair, like, you know, the, the big pulsating jelly that you live in that's coated in slime and whatever. Mm-hmm. And I kind of decided that... I don't think it's the best kind of lair because it's conspicuous and it's vulnerable to attack. Like, you could disease it, you could set it on fire. Like, you can't disease stone, you can't set stone on fire. And mm -hmm. he raised the point that it's also difficult to expand. And I agree with that. Um, I'm trying to think now. Would it be possible? for a necromancer to have a good relationship with like you have the normal sort of necromancer layer evil need to destroy it or about the exact opposite like... i have thought about the uh, thought before like my play style is more of like a um i'd say i usually go true neutral in D, but it's more like a necromancer who just wants to do his own uh or at least try to help out certain people like my normal idea or like uh philosopher and my necromancers is why just send the living out to war when you could just use those who have already lost their lives why send people who have a future out when you could just use the bones uh, of the um old so in that kind of case it, you, you first have like establish yourself as uh, like having like good relations you have to prove yourself that you're not gonna just like try to betray everybody so you probably have to be able, be able to like um use the bones of certain enemies and that certain stuff i think and also like a time of war just uh, it'd be, having you around would be more viable since uh, troops would probably be an issue at certain points. And, you know, with Undead, they're, like, there's all the benefits and perks of it. Like, you know, like, no need to sleep, no food supply, nothing like that. They could probably do extreme scouting. It's like be able to do certain missions and even, like, th make the enemy think that they're about to do, like, a hard push. In reality, it's just a bunch of worthless skeletons or they're being flanked by the rear. Yeah. Also, they don't tire. Yeah. Just kind of march wherever they feel like. Do you guys so establishing... think... Sorry. Nah, it's just like in general. It's like, to be a good uh, neck match, you have to be able to establish relations. That's just pretty much the whole point of being a good neck master, is you have to be able to know how to talk to people and just like establish yourself as something that's not evil. Because you know for a fact, everybody is going to be skeptical. Mm. Yeah. 
It's really only the evil necromancers that have to hide. To be honest. Usually, yeah. Not necessarily. Because how many um just have to inhale that. How many stories have there been where you have like good magical practitioners, good witches, good mages being burnt on the stake or being killed, not because of any ill that they've done, but because they have this power, nobody understands it, and they are a threat. I think it's been around, like, uh, with certain media. Um, I'm not sure, to, uh, I feel like this might be spoilers for somebody who's watching Black Clover. I'm not entirely sure. But, like, um, actually probably is. But, like, uh, later on in the, um, or at least the anime or manga, they start showing, like, the, um, the reason why these guys are really pissed, uh, the Inai of the uh, the midnight of the black, uh, black eyes sun I forgot the name, but it's like they're originally just a bunch of elves, but humans got jealous at the fact that they had so much mana to the point where they're just like, okay, we are going to make your race extinct now because you're more powerful than us. That's literally what they did. They uh, stole their mag uh, magic, uh, sort of amongst themselves and the nobles, and just killed all of the elves for the simple fact that they were stronger. That does yeah. not surprise me in the slightest. Yeah. I think that's actually like a story for a lot of genres, or like in a lot of um, the story in a lot of settings, where the human race is just kind of fearful of this other race for the simple fact that they're strong, so they like either kill them or enslave them. I think that's kind of like how it, uh, how it happens for like a lot of times. Where it's like, why is this strong race like being enslaved by the humans? Because the humans did that shit out of nowhere. The yeah, humans are kind of dicks, aren't they? Yeah, yeah. No, like just fearful of anything. Really, it's just dumb at certain points see that right there jeb has summed up the entirety of human history in a nutshell <laughs> yeah yeah since since before we since before we discovered fire humans in summary are dicks to each other yeah each other know things in general by the way guys we've been going for an hour and 26 minutes oh wow yeah okay so i guess we should probably wrap this up is there anything else that we haven't discussed that you'd like to put forward? Um, I mean, I kind of want to bring up like the architecture, the actual like design layouts, like the geographical. Well, I say the geographical advantages. I mean, we've already discussed that a little bit with like swamps and mountains and underground caves and whatnot. We can for sure talk about design. We haven't touched on that at all. Mm. True. I was going to say like because. From a design perspective, you could have like this um, underground layer, or you could have your layer in a myriad of ways. Like, have you ever have you ever played like um, Dungeons Two or Three? I yeah. have played. I've I've seen gameplay of Dungeons Three. Yeah. So what you can do is uh, people will come in through a dungeon entrance, and you can have them go through this great big gauntlet of traps and this great big maze to get to you. So while so while you've got stuff going on in your main uh, stuff, you have this great big labyrinth that people have to go through, and because you know you've made the you've made the dungeon, you can very easily, if you wanted, not have to go go it and do it yourself. So you could have like a secret passage or something along those lines. Yeah, I just had a wild thought. What about decoy bases? What about what? Decoy bases. Decoys. Those oh. were used, I think. That actually is probably a good idea, considering if I can like, uh, just control wherever you like. And just, like, you know, be able to control undead, probably at, like, any unlimited range. You could probably just make yourself, like, a decently smart undead, name him a necromancer, give him, like, a shitty lair with skeletons and stuff, and just say, he's the one who did it. Yeah, exactly. It could have that as a plot point, just, like, Hey, well, come on. Come on. Come on. <laughs> oh. <laughs> What's going the on food? there? The food has been consumed. Okay, so. Oh, okay. What if you have it? Where? <laughs> Did you absorb it? The food has been absorbed into my body. Its nourishment replenishes my soul. On the long one. The flesh quivers with, with an abstract ecstasy. <laughs> so. <laughs> What you can have is you can have like this master lich <laughs> who 
say for example he's just bored of everything like he's just he's just sick and tired of the usual doom and gloom what yeah. if what if everyone like you got all these other necromancers that kind of like revere him it's like oh he's this ancient being with so much knowledge he's got this great big infinite labyrinth he's got this layer that no man can ever penetrate and so on <laughs> and so forth and this, this hidden layer that nobody can ever get into and the plot twist could be that he's just sick and tired of, of all of these necros. So, so, he, so he's like, oh, you follow me, do you? Yes, yes, I've read all of your, I've read all of your desecrated tomes. I've, I've followed all of your practices. I, I, shaped, I shaped my, my robes after you. You know, and you got this guy going, oh, okay, well, uh, tell you what, there's a, there's a, there's a, they're over there, that's abandoned. Why don't you go in there? So, here, have some, have some skeletons. Here, here's like five skeletons. <laughs> have, have, have them. Yeah. And, uh, you know, just, just do your own thing. Oh, <laughs> That's that's this 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 have this appeases me. I, I'm, I'm getting really excited over it. Yeah, so so we go so we go it does all of that. Meanwhile, this this guy could just uh, sort of give a very sort of a little a little sort of bump into a little poke or a little shrug to someone and then go. Uh, I, I've heard there's a horrible necromancer over there. I think you should do something about it. No, yeah, you could also have like like some necromancer that you've set up like a legitimate lesser necromancer in like a cave somewhere. And then mm. pin all the blame for all your actions on him so that, you know, the people will go there after you've raided everything and they're like, we got to kill the necromancer. And they kill that poor guy and they think they've solved it. Meanwhile, you're in your lair and it's business as usual. Yeah, probably just like do your own like uh, shit like out, uh, I don't know, like somewhere just, you know, just have your lair established somewhere. You know, and then like you start uh, fucking around doing your own stuff, like just... I don't know, like create new disease or just like start making new outbreaks, then just find some random ass layer. It's like, I think he's the cause of this current issue, and just do that every time when I do something like mass scale. Yeah, probably it... a good way to prolong your life for a good while. What about pocket dimensions? Yeah, that's a great way as well. You have because like, oh sorry, yeah. I was gonna say like you have a layer that no one can really access or attack because it's hidden away. Yeah, I mean, pocket dimensions are pretty much the best idea. Probably what a lot of liches would do at a certain point if they just want to travel around. It's like, might as well make my lair portable. Hmm. I was going to say, um, I've got a character of mine that has a little mini pocket dimension in his ribcage. <laughs> the way it works, hmm. The way it works, he's got a great big fetish for books. He loves books, and he is the chief librarian of his master and what he does is he can reach into his chest take out a book because in inside his chest you've got like these stacks upon stacks of like bookshelves so he reaches in grabs a book and like he he, he is storied what if you had something similar so you could have like a ribcage pulling so it's like oh look he, he's um he got a lich over there he's by himself Pff, a lich by himself we can take that and then all of a sudden you've got this guy just like you know how how clowns or a magician is just like pull, pull like cloth out of their mouth or something like that. Yeah. Imagine imagine that, but with them dead. So it's just like just pulling out skeletons from his chest, just like you <laughs> do. Well, good. I figured out why why we not found his base. Why he is his base. <laughs> oh, that's pretty cool. Actually, yeah, I was trying to think like storing skeletons out of yourself. I'm not sure if that'd be a good idea because you can, you can raise them. But storing corpses inside of yourself, just storing your own ammunition. Yeah, that'd be a, probably a good thing. Yeah, pocket dimensions are awesome. Pretty much to sum it all up. <laughs> Probably the best idea for base, really. Storing your own ammunition. Yeah. Hey, look what I've made. What is it? It's an undead cannon. It fires undead at things. <laughs> look, that graveyard, that graveyard is full of ammo. <laughs> Pretty much. Is your is name by chance Genghis Khan? <laughs> Okay, guys, what do you think? We're going on long enough? Um, yeah, yeah. Probably, yeah. Alright, we've discussed plenty of things. I bet someone's got some kind of idea for their story now. If, if not, then they should be uh, entertained at the very least. Yes. Alright, thanks for being on, guys, and I hope to see you on the next one. Thank you for having us. Thank you for having us, yeah. By the way, I made some shirts on Teespring. They're available in black and also in color. 
There's a standards men's t-shirt, a woman's t-shirt, a hoodie, and even a corona mask. So you can have something cooler on your face than that boring white cloth or whatever. I get a couple of bucks per piece of clothing sold, which helps support the channel. Links in the description. And I also ordered some samples and photographed these so that you can see how they look in reality. They're not ironed though, I'm sorry about that. They're fresh out of the package and I haven't washed them or anything yet. 